we'll save that bad boy for tomorrow. Um, in fact, let's back up and say all the words. Let's back up to the beginning. You took a test last Thursday? Thursday? You took a test last Thursday. If you finished your test, I have it graded. Most of the grades are really good. Um, I think I have one F, but I think the rest are C's, B's, and A's. So it was a good test. It was good. I mean, they're supposed to have a couple. I mean, it happens. Everyone has a bad day on the test. It happens. It's life. Um, if you never finished, I haven't typed in a zero yet. Um, but you would like to get that done because I know me by the end of the week I will have typed in that zero. So by Friday you want to have come to me zero period. Um, which is at least one in here. Um, what else was there? So the tests were good and I have those passed back. Some people, yeah, everyone seemed to know what they were doing. Everyone seemed to know how to graph, which is what we did with piecewise which is why I feel confident that it's okay if we leave piecewise graphing until another day and we just practice a bunch of those tomorrow, it will be okay. So today we're going to go over these math workshops and then we're going to go back to evaluating piecewise. Okay, I'm going to pass out two pieces of paper while you think about you volunteering for number, let's say, seven. Do I have anyone want to volunteer for number seven? Oh, Angel does. What's the answer? Um, isn't it 12 right now, John, that rounds up to five? Oh, my goodness. She is not paying attention to what we're doing. She's got this there. Uh, Nick, you had some of both of yours. They're both yours. Is it 12 and 2? Okay, it says oh. perfect square. Is it 12 or 2 and perfect square? No. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I got 2 to square root of 6. 2 to square root of 6. And how did you get that? Um, Okay, and she is perfect, and we're going to talk about what she did as soon as I finish passing out these papers to this group. Nick, I'm going to forget your group and Daniel's group for a hot second. Don't let me forget you entirely. Okay, let's see. Okay, first of all, there is at least one in the room who's not reading. This is what happened last period, too. It's like you had, no, 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 not that. Something else. It's like you had two days off, so now you've, like, decided to be lazy at school. Why would you be playing on your phone? This is the first day I've seen you all week. Do you know how much we need to get done in three days to make up for those two off days? Ooh, good gracious. Okay, so the direction said, use your perfect squares. So what we're trying to do is we don't want a decimal. We're trying to reduce this radical using our perfect square. So I gave you an example. 500 is 100 times 5. I know the square root of 100, that's 10. So my answer is 10 square root of 5. Similarly, that's exactly what Paige was doing with 24. She said 24 is 4 times 6. Hey, I know the square root of 4, that's 2. So my answer is 2 square root of 6. Now, Nick brought up two other numbers. He said 12 and 2, but neither 12 nor 2 is a perfect square. So every time we're wanting a perfect square and another number, 4 is a perfect square, 100 is a perfect square, 12 is not a perfect square, 2 is not a perfect square. Okay, uh, number 9, yes. It is going to, mmm, that, it, we can do better, we can do better. Yes, ma'am. Four square root of two. And that's going to be better. Okay, so let's say um, Daniel was thinking eight times four is 32. It is true. Eight times four is 32. Four is a perfect square. So he's not on the wrong track, and I should have been more specific in my directions. You want to use your, I want to say, largest perfect square. There is a bigger perfect square than four that goes evenly into 32. 16 times 2 is also 32. 16 is a bigger perfect square than 4. I know the square root of 16, it's 4, so my answer is 4 square roots of 2. Now, if Daniel had done his way, where he had 8 times 4, and so he said square root of 4 is 2, so it's 2 square roots of 8, he could have simplified that further. He could have said, well, I know 8 is actually 4 times 2, and then I end up pulling the 2 out, and he ends up with 4 square roots of 2. But do you see all this orange extra work that Daniel's having to do? He's having to do a whole lot extra to simplify 
if he would just pick the largest perfect square possible to begin with, he could have it done in one step, whereas his version is going to take him six, seven steps. Okay, let's skip number 10 for a second and, because it's a big one. Let's go to number 11. Uh, let's see. Whose groups have helped me? Your group should get a point for number, for two of them, right? And then your group should get a point for an attempt on one. So, so table two has two points, table three get a point. Okay, let's go to number 11. You know you want to. I know you want to. Go ahead and do it. Okay, so he's, he's, we're going to give it to him. 9 times 5 is 45. I know the square root of 9 is 3. So it ends up being 3 square root 5. He is correct. And he can, his group can have a point for that. Number 12. Someone better jump on it because Paige thinking is on these. She likes these. Anybody from the back want to do number 12? 75 is a nice one. Oh, Anne Marie, yes, please. 25 and 3. And then what does it reduce to? Oh, okay. So, and we'll give you the point. And Paige, I know you know all the things. I'm going to probably move you all to a 5 in a second. I know. Y'all know. Well, you knew how to do this. Okay, 70. Can you do the hard one? Okay, perfect. We'll let her do that one. Oh, okay, so 25 and 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so my answer is 5 square root of 3. And Marie is correct, and her group can have a point. Uh, let's see. Now, number 10 is the hardest one because it's the largest number so far. We're trying to think of a nice perfect square that goes into 192. Ma'am. Go ahead. So at first, would you use um, the square root of 12 and the square root of 16? There's a bigger one than 16. There's a bigger one than 16. Yes, you're on the right track. Sadly, there's a bigger one. Uh, let's see if he can do it, and then we'll let you steal it. Daniel, you wanted it. I have 16 as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I got 64 and 3. I mean, she is only. She can get her point for that. Um, there's a bigger one than 16. It's 64 and 3. So it ends up being 8 square roots of 3. Yes, Jack. So, yes, 16 and 12 is 192, but again, we want the largest perfect square possible, and sadly, 16 is not the biggest. There's a bigger one that goes into 192, and that's 64. Now, seriously, how am I figuring this out? I'm taking the number 192. And then I'm just dividing it by my perfect square. So, yeah, you divided it by 16, but I would have tried higher. So, like, what's 90, 192 divided by... 49, is that a perfect? No, nope, that didn't work out nicely. 192 divided by 36. Oh, no, nope, that didn't work out nicely. 192 divided by 100. Mm, no, nope, that didn't work out nicely. 192 divided by, and she's right, 64 does give you a nice pretty number. So I seriously am just taking my number and dividing by those perfect squares when I get stuck. Some of them I know automatically, like 25 and 3 is 75. Some of them I have to play with on my calculator to figure out which perfect square goes into it evenly. Okay, are there any questions about 7 through 12? Well, bless our hearts, since we were out Monday and Tuesday, we still have to get all these done this week to stay on track in life. We're going to do 13 and 14 tomorrow. We're going to save the first six, the factoring ones, until Friday. It would be so smart of Nick to go ahead and try to work on those factoring ones, especially the easy ones like number 1 and number 5 and 6. I would say anything but two and four are the easy ones, and he can handle those quickly. The two-term ones, he can do that. He's got this. Okay, are there no questions about the math workshop? Is there a way that you can a square Yes. So you had 16 and 12. Okay, so yes, this is four square roots of 12. But then you can break down 12 further because 12 is 4 times 3. So I know the square root of 4 ends up being 2. I leave the square root of 3 and I end up with 8 square roots of 3. But again, you're creating all this extra work for yourself. But the fact that you can recognize that and continue to break down further and further is good. Okay, so last week, 
We worked on the little pretty note thing, and I'm telling you we're going to let the pretty note thing go for today. We're going to go straight to, look at page 23 and 25 in your giant, giant note packet. Can you get out 23 and 25 in your giant, giant note packet? It's the second page in your giant, giant new note packet. Okay, so we are going to practice evaluating piecewise functions today. That's all we're going to practice today is how to evaluate. We're not going to practice how to graph. We're going to let that go for tomorrow. My plan, because piecewise takes time, my plan, if I can pull it off and be rebellious and not do what everyone else does in life, which is hard sometimes. My plan, no, I can oh, okay. My plan is to quiz on piecewise next Tuesday, which is kind of terrifying because piecewise takes some time. As you recall, that one example graphing took us most of the class period. Now, it will get faster with time, but my plan is to quiz on piecewise next Tuesday. Um, right at the top of this page, that it is due Monday. It is due on Monday. Now, I did some of these for you last week. Hopefully, you have them wrote down. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. I did some of these for you last week. So, even though we're going to say this is due on Monday, uh, I don't know if Seth is here, but we'll pick on Seth anyway. Seth should have some of these filled in anyway because I did them last week with you. Okay. We're going to practice evaluating again in just a second. But because I do have some overachievers in the room who can handle it all, flip to the back page with the graphing problems. Again, originally this was supposed to be due today, but Irma's changed our whole life. So we're going to say it's due Monday. We're going to take off some problems. We're taking off 6, 10, and 16. Why are we taking off 6, 10, and 16? They are functions. What's different about 6, 10, and 16? It has the exponents. Table 5 gets the point, 4 gets the point. Because of those exponents. We're not going to graph any with exponents bigger than 1. So I think it's just 6, 10, and 16. But if you see any more with an exponent bigger than 1, you do not have to do it. Okay, bless your hearts. Sometimes we're all a little blonde in life. So I thought maybe you would want me to help you. On number 3, you might want to rewrite it. That top one says 1 minus x. We could rewrite that and put the x in front and say negative x plus 1. So let's say that again. Ellie needs to graph the line. She knows it's supposed to be in y equals mx plus b. Some of them are not in that order. If you would like to go ahead and put them in the mx plus b order, like number 3 and then number 5 has that same issue. They did 3 minus x. You and I would rather have it as negative x plus 3 when we graph. We would like to put it in mx plus b, not b plus mx. That's weird. So if you want to rewrite 3 and 5, they are on the screen. Okay, I'm giving these to Tylen, but again, I do not expect Tylen to practice graphing until after tomorrow. I just wanted her to know all the things. It's due Monday. I just wanted her to know all the things. Okay, I just handed you a new thing. Um, and let's look at it. So we're answering the question, what is Homer Simpson's favorite ice cream? Sadly enough, I've put the answer on the board. So even if Seth figures out the answer, that's great. Seth knows this is math class. I'm wanting to see Seth's work. Okay, um, and then of course my back has erased some of those. And do I have pink on my dress then? Do I have pink on my dress? Okay. So, of course, my back has now erased what I wrote at the end. It is okay to skip some of these problems on the Homer Simpson. It is okay to skip 15, 19, and 20. The ones with the radicals, they're on the back. And I totally understand if you skip 15, 19, and 20. Now, you could just do them in your calculator. But I know I'm wanting a lot from you in life, so it's okay with me if you skip 15, 19, 20. Again, I'm telling you what it spells out, so it's okay if you don't do 15, 19, 20. Okay, now for the main thing today, flip back to the front. Let's look at number one. They say g of 3. So we've got to look up at this function g and decide 
Do we plug it into the top piece or the bottom piece? Is 3 greater than 2 or is 3 less than or equal to 2? 3 is greater than 2. So we plug it in that top piece only. So I say 2 plus 3 squared, because that's the top one. So I get 2 plus 9, which is 11. Does everyone understand why we only plug it in the top one? Justice is doing too much if he's plugging it into both, or all three if there's a three one. He's doing way too much in life. Okay, he plugs it in that top one. Three squared is nine. He gets two plus nine, which is 11. And then he's determined to figure out how to do the thing on the back. So you flip to the back. Since number one is 11, we see 11 is K. So everywhere down here, you see the number one, you put the letter K. Now, what's terribly annoying is that some of them have the same answers. Some of them have the same answers. So you might get 25W for number seven, and you might get 25W for number nine, and that's okay. Everywhere you saw a seven and a nine, you would put a W. It's okay. That's why I went ahead and gave you out what it spells out, so Seth would not get hung up on that. Okay, flip back to the front. We're going to practice one more before I let you go crazy. Let, and I do not care if you work with your group. Let's do number seven. Number seven. K at negative three. K at negative three. Let's look up at that function. K. It says to pick this top one if x is bigger than or equal to two. To pick this middle one if it's between negative one and two. And to pick the bottom one if it's less than negative one. Is our number, which piece do we plug it into? Top, middle, bottom? Bottom. bottom. Every group can have a point. Let's plug it in the bottom. So it doesn't have any x's though, does it? So seriously, the answer is just negative four. It said if it's less than negative one, the answer is negative four. So I'm seriously just putting the answer as negative four. I don't have to do any math. Life's super easy when it's that kind. It was on page like 23 when I was doing it. I was looking, I was like, hey. right, And that's why I picked this one because I knew some people would ask me about that one on page 23. Okay, so flip to the back. We see negative 4 is A. So everywhere I see 7, I'm putting an A. I only see the 1, 7. Now, Seth's pretty smart. That means he couldn't work this backwards. He could say, okay. 14 is going to be T, because I know it spells out chocolate. T is the letter <laughs> 1. So on 14, I ought to get the answer of 1. So if I don't get the answer of 1 on 14, I've done something wrong. He could work this whole thing backwards. I realize this. I'm not trying to make your life hard. I'm trying to be nice. Okay, if you get brave, we're going to do the second page tomorrow anyway. You could always work it too. Lord knows I'm going to do lots of math in math class. I do not.